see everybody here. Um, why don't we just go down the line and everybody introduce yourself? Um, and we'll start down at the very end. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, my name is Dabra Chen. I am from Sports Illustrated, and uh, actually first met Chenming after the 2007 season with the Yankees. Came, went out to Taiwan. 19 wins and 19 wins, race to win season over two years for the Yankees, and uh, did a story on Chenming in Taiwan for Sports Illustrated. And why don't we start right here? Hello right, everyone, my name is Hai Chao Wu, I'm the GP for this company. Personal connection to 
You know, I know you're from New York, and I know you're a baseball fan. Why did you feel like this was something that needed to be told at the end of the day? Yeah, I really saw a side of him that I feel like a lot of people don't get to see. Um, oftentimes, when you're a baseball fan, you're a sports fan, you would talk about athletes, their performances, and that's all you want. And but what you don't get to see is what what brought them there in the first place, and what's behind the everyday routine to get them to actually go on the field and play like a line of game or a four game and a basketball game. So it's, it's this um, um, capability of being able to see um, what's behind the scenes and, and the things that you have to go through. And we saw a lot of that in the movie. Um, and that's what I believe a lot more people should see. And, uh, you know, and you probably more so relate to your own profession, your own life experiences. So, Chinming, when was the first time you met Frank, and how exactly how long did you did it take for you to know that okay, I'm ready to tell my story, and why did you feel like your story was an important one to tell? Because I know from experience and from being in New York that you know you are very guarded and very private. So why did you feel like, you know, you wanted your story to be told? At first four months when we were talking to each other, there I got a lot of phone calls and that, and I uh, rejected it a lot of times. But um, at the end, I decided to accept it because there was an opportunity that I saw to really inspire others and to share my story and to let people know to never give up on themselves. I know you two were, you know, at the story from the very beginning, and with any documentary film, you don't know exactly where the story is going to lead. And Brian, you came to the story pretty late, and you know, it, the final result is a certain kind of narrative that maybe these two didn't see at the very beginning. So I'm curious, like, what what did you you two see at the story at the beginning, and why, Brian, were you pulled into the story at the time period. I mean, you can talk about how you came into this project at that point. Uh, me? Uh, for all of you guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I came in, uh, to use a baseball analogy, I guess, that I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm in the middle of relief setup, setup man. <laughs> like six inning, seven inning, something like that. So Frank had been going down this road for a while already. Um, and then our editor, uh, Amy, who's over there, who should be up here. But yes. Amy. Sanity, right? 
right? <laughs> so, um, so I was like, I, I love it. I was already, I still am actually working on a, um, a, another doc about baseball in Taiwan, uh, totally separate. So when Frank and I connected, it was, it was just like, okay, I really, I can identify with this. I love getting behind uh, stories like this. I guess I have kind of a, you know, a little bit of experience in the sports docu space. Uh, for those who don't know, four years ago, or is it five now, Evan? I don't remember. Linsanity, uh, Evan, the director of Linsanity is here. We opened the festival in 2013. And after that, it just became kind of like, yeah, you know, the sports story about Asian and Asian American, you know, underdogs and athletes, the world needs more of these, right? And it's our responsibility as producers and filmmakers to tell these things because because there's not enough representation in the mass critical media. So it was, like I said, a total no-brainer. And, and coming into, you know, everyone knew Wong's story, Chenning's story, up to New York, but the after, you know, what happened when you guys just saw that, to me, was even more interesting. Because, yeah, the, 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 the height of it is, like, what gets people excited, but then the heart of it is, is you know, the journey, the struggles, all the minor league stops and so I think it really resonated with me because I've seen so many other athletes and I think as filmmakers we kind of go through that same process so it was uh, yeah it was you know I loved it right from the get-go and we're hoping we can find more audiences and we can talk about that a little later but so I guess you two I mean you were there from the beginning and you know at Going into a documentary, you don't know exactly what the time frame is. You don't know where the story is going to lead. How did the story change as you became involved in the story? As you went to a random minor league town from minor league town? I mean, and looking back at the story now, like, what is the difference in what this end result is and what you're envisioning? So, oh, um, we, we, when I first started this movie, we, we set up a few albums. Um, it was 2014, he was pitching in the minor leagues, and um, so I told, I told myself, I told my team, I was just thinking, okay, he could make it back to the big leagues one day, or he could not make it again anymore in his career. And basically, there's just going to be two albums. So, how do we tell a good story? How do we tell something that's more inspiring, no matter what the kind of the album is? So, um, of course, you know, filming him, you know, becoming his friend, I always secretly hope that he would make it back uh, to the big league one day. But uh, what if he doesn't? Uh, we still think that he, the story that we just presented, um, minus, minus the, the major league from that part, is still going to be something that is going to mean something to a lot of people because there is a guy who's been on the top of his career pitching in Yankee Stadium, but he's still going through that everyday grind, everyday uh, routine, and try to uh, just get back to where he was. And he, just the process itself is worth a lot. I think for me, it's also working on this project is also no brainer for me. Uh, uh, not only that I want to, I'm not eager to tell uh, Chinese story, but also uh, I'm just, as a fan, I'm just really looking forward to see the progression of his career. And I think Frank took a great commitment of uh, uh, just devoting in this project, and I think. All we have better do is just texting each other. Oh, hey, you gotta be available for this period of time because we're gonna be flying to Arizona and we're going to some other states. Um, I think uh, for what's worth, I think from what, from what, I, what I've learned in making this project from from Shami uh, is more than what I took in, into this project. So. Chinming, you know, you mentioned in the movie that you woke up in a lot of random 
places across the country, and you sometimes you didn't even know where you were. Uh, I mean, were there mornings that you would wake up and you felt like, why am I doing this? Like, what? Who am I doing this for? Why do I keep pushing along? And I think that you know that's sort of the core of really sort of the soul, soul of the stories. You know, at the end of the day, why did you keep pushing over and over again? 王建民，你拍这部片的时候，去了很多地点，也看到了很多东西。那每一天也可能醒来的时候都是不同的地点。你为什么想要就是继续的努力去做做做这件事情？其实那时候就是主角，然后就是很多的声音就在，就是说我不能再上，我就不做。那医生也说，可能只有三十到十分钟的几率。可是我是为了要证明说，我还可以再回到床上，那就为了一口气这样子继续努力。I didn't want to give up, and the doctors actually told me that I have a four percent chance of going back to the field. But um, regardless of what he said, I wanted to take that chance and really go back to the field and do my best. So, going back to your time in New York, um, you know, I just read a story that ranked the the best pitchers of the last twenty five years. They did a rotation, and it was Severino, Messina, Pettit, Sabathia, and Chinhuan. I mean, I think you walk around New York, and true Yankees fans just remember 2006, 2007, just how dominant you were. And I guess you know you talk a lot about sort of the the pressure of pitching for the Yankees and the pressure of being the pride for Taiwan. And this journey in the minor leagues, were you happier in the minor leagues or happier as a New York Yankee? What was the most memorable point in terms of your baseball journey? These years, you've been in New York, you've been helping the Yankees and you've been helping other teams. In these years, what was the most memorable memory in your life? 其实，在纽约的时候是最开心的，因为是，在最好的时候，在最巅峰的时候。可是，不可能永远在最巅峰。可是，到了小年的话，你会看到不同的东西，有不同的快乐。你可以在下面学到更多的东西，像一些选手，碰到每个选手都是不一样。他然后就是去那么多的队，那对我来讲也是，可以学到很多。Of course, when I was in New York on the Yankees team, that was definitely my most memorable time. Um, but and I was at my prime. But you know, there are times that we're, you're not always at your prime, and I think that there are a lot of opportunities that I could learn from different catchers, different pitchers, and I thought that was very valuable in my career growing. Jimmy, um, when you look back, sort of at this whole these last few years and. You know, I think one thing that sort of resonates with all of us here is just the long journey back to this moment in Kansas City to get back to the major leagues. Are there any regrets? Do you would you have done anything a little bit differently? Because you did miss a lot of time with your family. But, you know, it's all building up towards you know 50, 60 innings with the Kansas City Royals. I mean, would you have done anything differently or? To you, was the ending of this movie a happy and satisfactory ending? These years, you played a lot of baseball, you gave a lot of your heart. Do you have any regrets? Actually, it was for the family. Because for a long time, I was in the family, and I was just two or three years old. I think my biggest regret is definitely the family. Um, I have my wife taking care of my kids, and back in Taiwan, uh, I have my mom and dad as well. So my not spending enough time with family is definitely my biggest regret. 
All right, so we will uh, open it up to questions, if anybody has any. Oh, yeah. Wait, they have. Before we open up the Q&A, <laughs> Rob, you are, oh, yeah. we have a special treat for Chen Ming here. Okay. Uh, you want to come down, or can you belt it out? <laughs> Rob, Hey, good. Um, it's Rob, my best friend Mike, and we are long-time Mickey's fans, so uh, thank you to the one for being here. Uh, he, he gave us the inspiration to write for the 80s and the mid-2000s, uh, and he had the most double plays. Uh, 13 for four years, so we had a fight song every time he won a game or got a double play. It looks like this. <laughs> Ching Ming Wang is really crazy, he loves to get a double leg. Every hit or ball looks great, he looks at too much anyway. He loves to throw his great sinker, but makes me wish he won't take her. Fatters forget <laughs> they come down, and that's what Wang is all about. Turn two, turn two, that's his favorite thing to do. We love to see the CMWTP.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask in, uh, a question uh, that I have uh, for a long time. In the Chinese media, there's a saying, saying like, uh, you were claimed by the Korean people as one of them. <laughs> Is that true? Have you ever heard of this before? <laughs> He's a really great coach because he's kind to everyone, and even with newbies, he's a very good um, coach and guides them and takes care of them and things such. Uh, right there. <laughs> 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 我看完你的电影我还不知道你真的有推休还是你还在去丢球吗现在就是能把身体的状况如果可以承受的比赛的话我会去努力去打球球那身体如果不行的话就是退休 The question was, what do you think about the media or how do you deal with the media? And, you know, the media will be media and whatever I say comes, you know, out of my mouth. Um, so I never really go and pay attention to the interpretations that they have. <laughs> <笑><笑><笑><笑> 
回到过去的能力，你决定呢是放弃棒球陪小孩，还是放弃孩子去打你棒球，你爱棒球，这是问题。The question is: So、uh, you said that you had a grandma and you didn't、uh, spend enough time with family. So going back, would you take back that regret, or would you continue playing? No, I'm not going to. You're. Jia Han said, "I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that." I have to say, sorry, man. I'm, I'm still choosing baseball. <laughs> right there. Yeah. What kind of storylines were you not able to include that you had to cut out、uh, that may not have been represented in the film? And then, what are the plans upcoming for the film for the、uh, distribution? Yeah, this is a great question.、Um, making documentaries, it's about you know making choices, and、uh, there's so many great scenes we had to cut out. There's some.、Um, For example, there's there's one scene that、um, he was interacting with with his trainer back in Arizona, and they were looking at their old photos. It was the best moments that you know our editor would know, and uh, uh, they were looking at their old old photos, the old Chemi Mall photos from ten years ago. They're joking, they're making fun of him, and we we all you know we love that scene, but we have to take it out because it doesn't work. And that's the tough choices that you have to make. And um, yeah, um, we're also uh, just you know all of you here.、Uh, thank you again for coming out. But、um, I just wanted to、uh, let you guys know we're doing our U.S. theatrical release in October. And we release. I want to spread the words.、Um, The story, the story needs to be seen by a lot of people.、Um, so we're doing it in New York, Los Angeles, a few other cities in the states.、Um, so please help us spread the word. If you see the film today,、um, that includes everybody. I would、uh, kindly ask you guys not to reveal too much of the movie to people. I would, I would, you know, as a filmmaker, I would love to have more surprises. And、um, so it would be great if you、um, keep this to yourself. Just ask people to go see it, but don't tell what's going on and what happens. <laughs> and I would, you know, appreciate that. Thank you.、Um, and then we're going to Taiwan for a theatrical release in the summer.
next character of the company. I'm going to be on the star of the movie with the Taiwanese food, and everyone here is very hungry, so ready to get uh, get going. And uh, thanks so much for everyone to coming out.